Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. <laughs> the horse and its rider he's hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song, he's become my salvation. He's my God, I will praise him, my Father's God, and I'll exalt him. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his armies hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them, they sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like grass. Stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the water piled up. The surging waters stood firm like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue, I will overtake them. I'll divide the spoils, I'll gorge myself on them, I'll draw my sword, my hand will destroy them. But you blew your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, O oh Lord? Who is like you, majestic and holiness? <laughs> awesome in glory and working in wonders, you stretched out your right hand and the earth swallowed them. In your unfailing love, you will lead your people. You have redeemed. I did not sing. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble, and anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall upon them by the power of your arm. They'll be still as a stone until you pass by, O oh Lord, the people you pass by. You'll bring them in the Plant them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place, O oh Lord, that you made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, O oh Lord, your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <clears throat> <laughs> for when the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea... The Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out with her after her with tambourines and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, the horse and its rider he has rolled into the sea. Then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Sur. Sur. Sure. Sure. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Marah. And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, <laughs> Next. And he and he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a log, and he threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord, Lord made for them a statute and a rule, and there he tested them, saying, If you will diligently... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, Egyptians. 
Then they came to Elam, and there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. Is everybody good to go on to chapter 16? Probably just do one more chapter. story about that afterwards. I have a story after we're done with the read-through. So let's keep going with 16 for the purposes of the video. We'll finish up chapter 16 and then we'll take a break and we'll have a little discussion. They set out from Elam and all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. You have brought us into the desert to starve its entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they will prepare, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as to gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? And Moses said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening, and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will have to be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, dew lay around the camp. When the dew had gone up, there was, on the face of the wilderness, a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, 
What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord had commanded. Each one is to gather as much as he needs. Take an omer that is probably about two quarts or two liters for each person you have in your tent. Uh, 17. <laughs> like, where? I'm distracted. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered, some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and stink. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning, morning they gathered it, each as much as he could, but when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers each, and when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, <coughs> This is what the Lord commanded. You're supposed to say that too. Tomorrow is to be a day of rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. So they laid it aside till the morning as Moses commanded them, and it did not stink, and there were no worms in it. Eat it today. You're still talking. Because today <laughs> is a Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my instructions? Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the, given you the Sabbath. Um, that is why on the sixth day you gather bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where he is on the seventh. Uh, on the seventh day. Now the house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded. Take an omer of manna and keep it for the generations to come, so that they can see bread I gave to you to eat in the desert when I brought you out of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put an omer of manna in it, then place it before the Lord to be kept for the generations to come. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. The people of Israel ate the manna forty years till they came to a habitable land. They ate the manna till they came to the border of the land of Canaan. And Omer is the tenth part of an Ephah. Ephah? Sure. Very good, everybody. We haven't missed a beat. Thank you. Thank you.